The Rochester School Board recently passed a nearly $900 million budget. District spending has a few critics among Rochester's mayoral candidates who are calling for more accountability and transparency. One person who has spent much time dissecting what's working and what's not in city schools is Board President Van White. He joins me at the table to talk about the Mayor School District Partnership, the current state of our city school system, and more. And welcome back to the show. It's good to have you here. Good morning. So we have had all the candidates in this year's yep. race for Rochester Mayor here at the wow. table, and they've talked about their plans in terms of education for city school students if elected and how closely aligned they would work with the district. We'll hear some of what they had to say in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you, Van, how significant is that city hall mayor school district partnership in terms of advancing education well i mean just in the last two administrations you can see the difference bob duffy took a very um I would say anti-school district approach, uh, supported legislation uh, you recall calling for mayoral control. It caused for a very tense relationship. There was no working together at the level of uh, 131 West Broad Street and 30 Church Street. A lot of tension. Uh, Mayor Warren came along, took a totally different approach, has not really pushed the mayoral control thing. There's been some undercurrent of it, but really has not. Instead, she's focused on reading, uh, parental engagement and involvement in community schools. So I think uh, who gets elected? Who serves at 30 Church can make a huge difference in district relationships. All right, well, let's take a look. We've got a short video so you can hear some of the thoughts, uh, perspectives, and even a few proposals from some of the mayoral candidates. Again, uh, they all sat here at the desk and, and they shared some of their thoughts. So we've got a short video to show you. Sure. I stress the city school district because I think for our educational system to be successful, it has to be a collaboration between City Hall and the city school district. It can't be taken over the school district because I think the mayor's responsibilities are too great to run the city and the school district. Well, not taking over the school district, but do you think that you, the mayor should have a more prominent role considering the fact that we haven't seen some of the advancements that we've heard so much about over the years? I think in terms of it should be a partnership, and I don't think we've seen that for a very long time in the city where it was a partnership between city hall and city school district. In what ways do you want to, do you plan, if elected, to hold the city school system accountable? Spending is incredibly important. I spent an entire year uh, holding the city school district accountable on spending. I exposed administrative bloat. I exposed other kinds of spending issues. Certainly the mayor can use her bully pulpit to talk about spending issues in the city school district. I think that's appropriate, but I don't want to have an antagonistic relationship. I want to have a relationship with the city school district in which we do everything we can to promote it, to reduce poverty and to get families to try this system. I know one big thing was to get teachers, to draw in more teachers to the city of Rochester. You said exceptional teachers. How did that go? Well, we are in the process. I just had a meeting with the deputy superintendent. We had changes at the school district. We talked to uh, Teach for America and, um, you know, one of the things that we had charter schools that was open to it, you know, the city school district at the time was not necessarily um, open to it, but I think that I, I just talked to the deputy superintendent, have a meeting with the superintendent on Monday, and I believe that uh, they are on the right track to really go after and attract additional teachers visiting HBCUs and other schools that they haven't visited before. And I think that that's very important and we're working together to do that. In Rochester, we, the city has refused to give the school district any more money since 2004. As a result, I mean, you're not expecting to buy a car for the same price you did in 2004, 12 years ago, and we're still giving them that same amount of money. We have basically deprived them of 30% increase in uh, that funding, which isn't the whole total, co total cost. We will have to find a way to increase and make that up so that we can have the arts programs, the, uh, the music programs, the preschool programs that actually make a difference and keep kids in school and get them better results. Once we increase the tax base of the city, we can get rid of that big five control from the state. Once we come out from underneath of that big five control, we can do like a fair port or... or and you mean, and when you say the big five, you mean in terms of funding from city? In terms of Got funding, it. in terms of a paid school board mm -hmm. where we cannot, as a people, control the budget process, that sort of thing. Because we just realized in the news that the budget has been not very well um, held to accountability. Right. So we need to take back that power over our city school district and provide a better um, form of education for our students. They need to focus on getting competent teachers out there and working and getting their parents 
uh, involved in their uh, kids' education. Um, another thing that I would like to say, you know, um, many Democrats always talk about transparency. How about this for transparency? Instead of hiding the school taxes in the city taxes, how about they collect their own taxes so that people can see the real failure and, and the real cost of our school district? Man, I know these were very short snippets from yeah. interviews, but after having seen them, is there one thing, I'm just saying one thing that stands out to you as a potential positive for the city school district? I think everybody agrees. It sounds to me like we're all in the same rowboat facing the same turbulent waters. Everybody's agreed that everybody should take on an oar, but not necessarily grab it anybody else's oar. And what I mean by that is I don't see anybody saying, oh, let's do mayoral control. I think everybody acknowledges that there are significant challenges facing the district and the city, and that everybody needs to be in this boat together, rowing in unison. That is encouraging to me. I think if you go down that road of, uh, listen, let me grab your oar, I'll get my oar, and I'll grab everybody else's or uh, you just sort of spin around in circles. So that's encouraging news to me. Anything concerning, anything that you think that was said that was misguided? No, I, you know, I get it. While they would all be concerned, there's actually, I think I count about six of them. There's seven members of the Board of Education. We could use all those voices, whether they win or not. Um, it's encouraging to hear people come up with different ideas. Like, I heard some person talk about the fact that we're a fiscally dependent district and that we our money has basically been frozen at $119 million for the last umpteen years, and it hasn't changed. We've increased the valuation of property. We've even increased taxes. But so the district, so the city gets more money. 30 Church Street gets more money, but we don't. So I've, I heard a lot of interesting ideas. There's not a bad idea that I heard amongst them, actually. Well, I have to, it's interesting. We've heard so much from the mayoral candidates when it comes to uh, their plans, if elected, uh, when it comes to assisting and partnering with the city school system. Uh, it's been difficult to get the superintendent in the studio to sit down with me. I have an unofficial poll with my colleagues in the media, and they've also the same thing, yeah. minus the DNC. Uh, given that, it, as a, someone who is so accessible, sure. Van, as you are when it comes to district matters, is it concerning that we haven't been able to sit down with her as of yet? You know, uh, what I've learned about Barbara since she's taken that position is she's not uh, anxious, if you will, to get in front of the cameras. Uh, I have explained to her, and I think she appreciates it, even in advance of me talking to her, that it is a very much a public job, and that given the struggles that we have with our numbers, our data, uh, there's a crisis of confidence, and they do need people, multiple voices, to speak up. But the interesting thing about this is, and I'll do whatever I can to assist you in this effort, but people need to understand this. There's no Superman at 131 West Broad Street. There's no Superwoman. It's not one person that's going to turn this district around. As I said, you got six candidates there running for mayor. One of them is going to win. We still need the other five. You need all seven board members. You need you. We need voices throughout this community. So I, I will do what I can to encourage Barbara to, to talk more. And I think she's getting more acclimated to the rule. She spent a lot of time trying to understand what's going on. But I want people to understand this. Barbara is not going to turn the system around. It's going to be the mothers, fathers, aunts and uncles, teachers, preachers, everybody across this community to make a difference. Well, since she is the person at the helm in the district right now, is there something that you believe, after talking with her, that you sure. would say, yes, this is something that she plans to implement, that she wants to be accountable for, that you think could help move the district forward? Well, I, I, again, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about it, but, you know, we've opened up, the board has initiated an effort to open up two incubators of success. At East High School, we have the U of R running that, uh, high school. We have uh, Geneseo running 19 school. So we believe we've created incubators of success to develop best practices throughout the district. What Barbara is working on is the fundamentals of the district, making sure that across the board, across all of our schools, because there's some 50 something schools remaining after you take out East High School and number 19. So Barbara is spending a lot of time making sure that children are having the resource that they need, the reading teachers, the social workers, uh, making sure that everything that is required for our special needs students is provided, our bilingual population. So she's making sure that we're providing for the fundamentals across the board. When you add what East, what the University of Rochester and Geneseo are doing at East and 19 respectively, and what Barbara is doing fundamentally across the board, I think you'll see a district that people will see signs of hope. Let's talk about sure. Geneseo and School 19. This is something that you were really excited about. Mm -hmm. Some of your board, you just recently voted on this, the board. Uh, this is also pending approval from the State Education mm -hmm. Department. Absolutely. You were excited about this. Uh, there were some of your colleagues on the board, one in particular, not as excited as 
as you. No, that's, Why that's do correct. you think that this can work? Well, uh, you know, again, it's based on this fundamental notion that it takes a village to raise a child. Um, it takes a village to raise a community. And so what we've done at East and 19 is engage an entire community, in this instance represented by major universities. But as you know, for example, the University of Rochester, they represent thousands and thousands of people. They're the number one employer in this region. They have a social work school. They have a, a uh, medical school. They have uh, an education school. All those issues, all those people, all those people in that community can bring their resources to bear at East High School, which at the time that they took over was our worst performing high school. Um, same with SUNY Geneseo. They're, they're, they intend on creating a teacher-led, power-led school, community-led school, bringing resources from across the community. We believe, firmly believe, that these two models will develop um, as incubators, uh, incubators for best practices that relate to community engagement, parental engagement, teacher engagement, teacher empowerment. and that is what we believe will make a difference. So I gotta repeat to the, about this thing about Barbara. I'm not so much concerned that she's not necessarily available to every media person because to the extent you speak to Anju Sika, who is the dean of uh, the education school at SUNY Geneseo, or Sean Nelms, as you know, at number 19 school, to the extent you speak to East High School, to the extent that you speak to the parents, uh, the community leaders um, that, that drive and address challenges that our children face, I think people will get the message, it's not one one person at 131 West Broad Street or one person at 30 Church Street that will turn us around. It is the individual players and community leaders that will do that. Let me ask you, uh, some of your board members not in favor of this partnership to SUNY Geneseo School 19. Uh, what's to fear? Well, uh, you know, the irony is, uh, this is a repeated theme with me, I think people really believe that there is one person that can turn this around, that there's a Superman, you know, remember the movie Waiting for Superman? I don't believe that. I, I do not believe that. And that's why the model that we've established at East and 19 are representative of this notion that it takes really a community to do this. Why do I think some members, and I'm maybe trying to read some of their minds, and, and they're not the only people that might not support this, is because they're used to this notion that the superintendent, the superman or woman, will swoop down and save us. Um, that's what people believe, but that's not even what's in the statute that created boards of education. We're the ones, we're the community, we're represented by the community. There's an election taking place right now where people get to elect their community representative to sit on the board of education. The law says that we drive curriculum, uh, personnel decisions, building placements, uh, cafeteria ladies, we make all those decisions. So um, I think that's what is at, at, at the base of the concern. People are afraid that we're challenging the traditional notion that one person, Superman, can save a community, and that's not the case. Right, and I can't let you go. Just tell me one thing going under the radar. There's a phone app that's, that you want to share. We've got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. That a lot, but tell uh, me about this. Come September, a parent will be able to pick up their smartphone, punch in their code and figure out whether Johnny is actually sitting in the classroom, how they're doing on their ELA scores, how they're doing on their math scores, determining whether they've had passed enough Regents exams to graduate. So so she doesn't call me, Johnny's parent doesn't call me two days before graduation and say, my son's not graduating. She will know a year in advance by simply pressing a button. Fantastic, very good. Rochester School Board <laughs> President Van White, thank you for joining me today. And City School Superintendent Barbara Dean Williams is scheduled to make her first appearance on the program in mid-June, so be sure to tune into that broadcast. Podcast that's on Thursday, June 15th at 8 p.m. right here on WXXI TV.